Hello everyone, Michael back with another video. In this video, I'm going to show you how to patch different column types and power apps. If you enjoy power apps, power automate, SharePoint teams, and power BI videos, feel free to subscribe. I'll be putting out more videos in those areas. And now for my intro. All right, so we're going to show you guys how to use the patch formula in power apps. I went ahead and create a SharePoint list with a bunch of different column types. So we have a single line of text, a single choice column, a date column, multi-line text, a multi-choice column, a person column, a number column, and a yes, no column. So I went ahead and created a screen that looks at the different inputs so we're going to go ahead and enter in some information so for my first name we're just going to do michael alex for the first and last name the department so this is a single choice field we're just going to say it and make sure in your power app if i select on this combo box i went ahead and labeled everything on the left hand side so we have inputs combo boxes dates but for this combo box, since it's a single choice field, we want to disable allow multiple selections. For my start date, let's go ahead and set that to August 30th. Notes, so it's a multi-line. Uh, it's pretty much the same as a single line, so I'm just going to add new hire for IT. So the supply is needed. I need to actually change this column. So I just copied it. Uh, let's go ahead and change the items really quick. So for the items, so it'll be choices, new employee, because that's my SharePoint list. And this should be supplies needed. Let's go ahead and see if that fixed it. And there we go. So this should, you should allow multiple selections on this one. So I'll go ahead and set that to on. So let's say he needs a computer monitor, keyboard and mouse, and headset. So he needs four items for that. And for the manager, we'll just choose myself because I'm the only user in my directory. But for the salary, we'll go ahead and give him 70,000. So that's my number field. And let's say he does need an employee badge. So down here, I have a reset button. I'm going to create a reset button to reset all these fields. Let's say, the user just filled out a bunch of fields and they don't really need it and they want to enter in a new one. You shouldn't have to go through each one of these. I'll just go ahead and create the reset for all of these. And it's good to have one of these buns for after you patch the new employee in my case. You want to reset all the fields so they don't get confused and say, oh, did my thing not patch? All these are still here. Uh, no, we just want to... Make sure that reset is functioning. All right, so after all my resets, if I click on this button, it'll reset everything. I don't wanna do that. Let's go ahead and work on the patch function. So I wanna patch all of these to my new employee list when a user clicks on the submit button. So for this one, it's going to be patch and I will zoom in. So it's going to be patch and it's going to be whatever my data source is. So in my case, it is the new employee SharePoint list. And if you're creating a new record, you want to do the defaults formula. So we want to do defaults. We want to create a new record in new employee. And that will be the record. So if it was already an existing record, you want to use like a lookup. But in my case, I want to create a new record. So we got to use the defaults because that will create a new record. All right, so let's go ahead and patch these uh, data fields in. So you wanna use curly brackets here and we just wanna go through the column names. So my first column name is the title. So this is my first name. And if I look on my left-hand side, it's input first name. So this is just a single line of text. So we can just do input first name dot text and that sh will work. Okay, so it's giving me an error here because uh, I didn't finish the formula. All right, so the next one is last name. So my last name, same as the first name, we just want to do input last name dot text. Okay, 
So the next field is my department. So department, and this is a single choice column. So in this case, we want to do CMB department. So whatever you named your combo box, it'll be that, and then just dot selected. You don't want to do dot value because it needs whatever is in this box. It just, it doesn't want the text. It wants the record of it. So you just do dot selected. Okay, for the start date, let's go ahead and do start date. And we want to do date, start date, dot selected date. And again, that is a date picker property. I recommend you use that if you have any dates because it's pretty easy. If you give the user like a text field to use, sure you can do that input that patch that in, but most of the time the formatting is going to be incorrect and it's just easier to use the date picker. Okay, so the next one is multi line. My notes multi line is pretty easy. It's the same as single line of text, but you can go over the 255 character limit. So we want to do input notes.text same as the other one okay for the multi-line so this one is supplies needed so we want to go ahead and do the combo box so cmb is what i abbreviate my combo boxes this one is cmb supplies and then we want to do selected items so that's going to give us all the items that we selected and it's going to patch that into the supplies needed but make sure on your combo box settings on this one you do have allow multiple selections because if you don't have that it's going to get confused and then you'll probably get confused if the computer's confused <laughs> so just make sure that's checked and you won't have any issues there those supplies needed that should be good to go okay the manager so this is a person field all we have to do for this one is cmb manager that's selected i think we can just do selected here uh, i will come back if we have to do dot claims but we might just be able to do dot selected here so for the salary, this is a number field. If you want to go ahead and make it to where your input um, component, if you want to make sure that is a number right here that might stop you if a user tries to enter like a comma or like a blank space after, could probably throw it off or if they just put like, a, you know, they try to enter text, they aren't, they aren't able to. So that will save you a headache and it will make your data more accurate. So salary, it's going to be input salary dot text. So I know it looks like a text. Let's go ahead and put the value here. So the value will convert this to a numerical value. Okay, and the employee badge needed. So this is a yes, no column. Employee badge needed. And for this one, we just got to put like a true or false in there. So if it is yes, so we just want to do toggle employee badge dot value. Okay, let's go ahead and see if this works. And let me go ahead and make a comment. Single line of text, single combo, single choice field. State field. It's also good practice to leave comments in your code because people other than you can read it. So this is multi line field. Supplies needed. This is multi voice field. Person field. This is a number field. Yes, no field. Okay, so we're not getting any errors here. Uh, everything looks good. If you want to take a screenshot of this, feel free. 
All right, so after this, we want to notify the user that record has been created. So it will give the user a notification. And then also we want to go ahead and select our clear button. So button clear, because that will actually clear out all the inputs. So let's go ahead and press submit and see if this works. The record has been created. They were all reset to the default. So my default on the date is actually today. So that one, will, if you don't want anything to show for it, remove the, what's in the default date. Let's go to my HR SharePoint. And there we go. We have Michael, uh, Alex, IT patched, start date's good, notes is good, a multi-choice is good, the manager, so that person field, all you have to do is dot selected. So that's good. Salary is good. And the employee badge is needed. So that is how you patch the different column types in SharePoint. The other column type I didn't include was the lookup column type because I didn't really have anything to look up on this list. But I do have another video if you are interested in learning how to patch the lookup column type. It's pretty easy. So if you guys have any questions, feel free to leave them in the comments down below. I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Um, it'll be great if you subscribed and liked the video for the support and I will catch you guys in the next video.